So here we are at the Crystal Lake Berry Maze. And this is a project that I built with my uh, OSU on-campus students. And I've been taking care and maintaining and uh, continuing to develop this project ever since then. And we're gonna talk about a very special permaculture principle in looking at this berry maze here, and that is integrate, not segregate. So the three major things that we integrated in this project are the water or hydrology, the social interaction, and then the horticulture and food production. So the first thing that I'm gonna show you is the water element on this site. So this here is a ditch that drains this entire part of the neighborhood here. And so every winter, this ditch runs along the road and there's water in this ditch for anywhere from two weeks to two months, depending on how rainy of the season is. So what we did was we took this ditch here and we cut into it, right? And we excavated out and we tied into this ditch and excavated our ditch all the way around to where you see the bamboo. And that bamboo is on an island, and that bamboo island is the goal of the maze. That's where you're trying to get to in the berry maze. So here I am standing in the extension of the ditch that we made, and we came and we curved this ditch now all the way around deep into this yard here and finally over to the bamboo island. So now here I am standing around right at the base of the bamboo island. The ditch goes all the way around this island. Now like I said before, when that street side ditch is filled with water, what happens is the water comes and it fills this entire ditch. So this ditch will be filled with water for as long as water is flowing through the ditch draining the neighborhood. So what I've done here is uh, increase the surface area contact between water and soil. So where it was just a straight line, now the water is contacting the soil in this whole expansive area where the ditch is weaving through the site and creating this island. And that's that much water now that is hanging around here in this ditch and soaking down, recharging the well that we are then using to irrigate the berry maze. So now that we've looked at the water element, let's talk about the social element of this thing. So imagine you're a little kid and you're growing up and right down the block from you in your neighborhood here is this berry maze, right? And so you're trying to find the end of the maze, but you don't really care that much because you're eating berries the whole time. I'll take you on a little tour here of the berry maze so you can see the complexity of the maze in just this small space. and We'll end up at the end of the maze. All right, so you've successfully made it to the end of the maze, the bamboo island, where we have this lovely bench and you can sit here in the shade of a grove of this uh, Phyllostachys dulcis, this sweet shoot bamboo, and you can sit here and you can eat your berries. So the third layer we have to this design is the horticultural, agricultural layer. And we have a number of different types of berries that I'm uh, growing here. We've got this beautiful uh, thornless blackberry. It's a triple crown. It's just a variety that just does absolutely beautifully in our area. So, man, I mean, these things are huge and juicy and awesome. One of the great things about these triple crown blackberries is they really create this dense thicket. So we've planted these ones right here along the road. And this is our initial privacy screen and also attracts a lot of people because they can see these huge, uh, awesome berries. We are here in the dry season at this point. So we've had many waves of berries being ripe throughout the season so far. So now we're pretty much, we've already kind of come past the peak, but we're firmly in the blackberry season. So the main part of the maze is with these raspberries here. And that's really the biggest crop 
you can see the extensiveness of raspberries here at the Berry Mace. We're late in the season at this point. We're in the dry season here in mid-August. And so the berries are just now, these raspberries are just now kind of putting on their late crop. Also, there was an apple tree that was here that we took out that was kind of half dead when we put in this ditch here, but then all of these suckers sprouted from the roots. So I went ahead and grafted a whole bunch of different varieties of apples onto these suckers. So this is growing into a multi variety apple thicket. Additionally, we have these josta berries or hosta berries. And this is a uh, cross between a gooseberry and a currant. And they're these black currants. These are mostly on the tail ends now of their season as well. But we've got a whole bunch of these stuck throughout. And, um, they're really tasty, pretty tart, good for jam. And um, we got some other stuff I'll show you as well. Here's a fig tree we also planted. Uh, we've already harvested the early crop of figs. This is the second crop that's ripening right now. So in addition to the bamboo that I talked about earlier, I also planted these willows here down in the ditch. Remember this ditch floods every winter and What's happening is these willows are gonna grow up and you know they're good for coppice and, and building materials just like the bamboo, but also they're gonna grow up and create a willow screen within this ditch. So we'll have the bamboo popping out of the middle and we'll have the willows around the edge. So it'll be this nice little uh, forest uh, building material island zone here that is a nice uh, partial shade effect and windbreak and habitat element uh, within the berry maze. All right, so this is a thornless boysenberry. This is in its first year of fruiting. This is an area where the raspberries actually died back. I think there might be some root rot in here. So instead of trying to fight that and get raspberries established here where they're not doing well, I put this boysenberry in and it's basically taking over this whole area that was previously in raspberries. Oh man, I've eaten so much berries, I kind of actually feel sick right now. Um, so there we have it, integrate, not segregate. We've taken the hydrological, we've taken the horticultural, we've taken the social elements, and we've mixed them all together in this neighborhood berry maze. So. How can you integrate different elements in your design to make a more effective, more integrated permaculture experience?